All right, theory, it's good, it can wait. Let's just start writing. Are you ready? Start now by opening up a blank doc. Maybe that's a Google doc, a Word doc, an error story doc, whatever. Okay, once you've got that open, let's say it's time to write an email. Okay, it's a welcome email or, you know, that first email when someone signs up for your list. Okay, what do you do? You've got that document open. Where do you start? Now, a conversion copywriter does not spend more than two seconds with a blank page in front of them. We, and that includes you, we always start with what's called a conversion framework. Let me show you a super popular one so you know exactly what I mean. Okay, you've got your blank doc and you write these three words on it. That's it. Now I just hit enter a bunch of times. It does not have to be elegant. You don't need tables or anything fancy. If you want to, I like to make sure that this stands out from what will become copy. I put those in as H1s. Um, and all we're going to do with this is then identify our prospect's problem, then agitate that, which really means how does that problem manifest for them so that they feel it. This is the part that you like to edit away because it makes you feel something and you're scared of that. Um, and I recommend against it. This doesn't work if you just go problem solution. And most marketers love to just hop to solution. Um, but then you miss out on the problem, which is what drives people to actually buy things. And especially when they feel it. Now they want the solution and solution is your product or the category of products. There's other things you can do with this framework, but it's a really solid starting point. I've used PAS and only PAS to write maybe 90% of the emails and pages I've written over the past decade. So you don't need to have 15, 50, 1,000 frameworks in your back pocket. You really only need one, maybe two. So here's a second one to use when PAS maybe just like isn't working for you. So if PAS isn't working for you, here is a good one. Desire, obstacle, solution. So PAS has you lead with the problem and agitate it. Desire, obstacle, solution has you lead with the outcome they want. And that's something that's really desirable to them. So you'll want to really pay attention to the upcoming lessons to understand how to like fill this in. But you've got desire. This is where you'll put the desire that they're seeking. Then obstacles. What's getting in the way of them achieving that thing that they desire? And then the solution to that obstacle. Now, you haven't seen how to fill that framework in yet. That is coming. Right now, the question for you is probably, which of these two frameworks should I use? And the answer, honestly, it won't come from me. So think back, way back to that lesson on the you rule and the unapologetic self-interest of our beloved prospects and customers. With that in mind, I'm sure you can kind of guess where the answer to that question comes from. It's from your prospects and your customers themselves, which brings us to this very important part of the course the conversion copywriting process. This is a simple three-part process that goes like this. Part one is all research and discovery. Now this is where you go out and you listen to what your customers and prospects have to say. We'll dig into this as we go. Part two is writing, which includes drafting, editing, and even wireframing. If that is the copy you write isn't like flowing in a single column. So basically if you're writing anything that isn't an ad or an email, you'll lightly wireframe your copy, like when you're writing a web page. Part three is validation and experimentation. Now, again, because this is our training program for beginners, we're not gonna dig into this part too much. I'd really rather you get confident about filling up the page before you start thinking about, you know, the technicalities around experimentation. All right, so given that the first part of our process is research, our job as conversion copywriters is to do the research to understand who our prospects are, what they want, what their frustrations are, what their fears are, who is influencing them. Even things like their most common use cases, even what adjectives they use to describe our products or services. We call it research, but we're like basically private investigators. We're kind of eavesdropping ethically on the people we want to convert. And we're using what we hear to write our copy. What we hear can even help us choose a framework. So you're writing to convince your prospect to, let's say, invite their team to use your solution together. Let's pretend that's what's going on. Then you would listen to what they say about inviting their team to basically anything. 
Are they excited about it or are they anxious about it? What messages come up a lot when they're talking about their team? Is their tone one of nerves or of optimism? That might help you rank like PAS above or below DOS. And keep in mind that the framework you choose should first be a good fit for both the solution you're selling and for what's going on in the head and heart of your prospect. So the general rule is this, if they talk about problems a lot and your solution solves those problems, it's kind of a no-brainer to use the PAS framework. Now, if they talk about what they want a lot, maybe they're like rather aspirational or they're growing weary even of a world in which like everyone talks about problems, then you'd likely want to use the DOS framework. Now, that's not a perfect rule, but it's a good starting point. And if worse comes to worse, you can always, honestly, this sounds crazy, but just flip a coin to choose between PAS and DOS. Both work really, really well in a ton of cases. So don't overthink this part of the process. This is truly the easiest part.